नमस्ते सब जाना म भुवन कोचमी को तरफ बड़ा फिर और को मेंटरिंग वन वन को सेशन ले रहा कुछ आज हम लोग गेस्ट से ही सुप्रल जी उन्होंने जो सुप्रल राजूसी आ वहाँ से वॉइस एक्टर उन्होंने जो सो वहाँ लाइसेंस बैकस्टेज में एक चीज बेटी आती हो आ वेरी प्लेजेंट पर्सनालिटी एकदम सुपर फ्रेंडली आ हाँ तो ऑलिकोटी इ आपनों वॉइस के बारे में चालू कितनी कॉन्शियस होनी है रईस हाँ अंतर डेट्स प्रॉब्ली हाँ आपनों वॉइस तो चेंज करना मिल रही ना अब जून छह तेरी संगने बात नो पड़े तो रईस वेरी लकी टू हैव एन अमेजिंग वॉइस तो लकी बाहेक पनी आम आम शुरू देस अ लॉट ऑफ वर्क दैट गोज इनटू इट आम भी सोचा तो um it's probably not as easy as we think tar waha ko strategies haru ani waha ko yo career ko bare ma pani like to know a lot more uh, from him himself um supal ji lai nai screen ma bolayo let's start talking to him hello thank you for having me bonday namaste and uh, namaste to everyone who is watching this on youtube my name is supral um, I recently graduated uh, with a degree in China studies from Peking University, but uh, 2020 was a very, very bad year to graduate in. And, uh, you know, I'm figuring out a couple of things. But besides that, uh, I really enjoy voice acting, and I've been doing this since 2010. And I'm, I'm slowly trying to meet more people because this is something um, that I really enjoy doing. And uh, I really have a lot of fun doing that's basically the same thing said in like a different manner two times but point i'm trying to make is i really like this <laughs> <laughs> you really like this uh there's yeah. super um double it's your voice acting go at why you use some labels or something let's say side my rack no one thing who are you as a person um i think um wow that's a that's a very deep question right um let me think about it I think um, the first thing I would say would be um, I'm an only child. So, yeah, I think that makes a lot of difference in your personality and how you view the world and, and how you want the world to view you, right? So that's something we've I've not had control over, but I feel like that has really, really um, shaped the person that I am, right? So to say, I started to birth by a suru gorda kiri. I feel like that really makes a lot of difference. Um, I am also very, very proud of my Newa identity. So I grew up in Kathmandu. I very much love this city. Um, I do not like the fact uh, that, you know, people don't have the same love for the city as I do. Um, I have great memories from when I was a kid growing up here. And um, yeah, I think those are the two things that uh, have really shaped who I am. Okay, those are the things that has really saved uh, who you are, Panubu. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to talk about childhood. You've kind of partially answered <laughs> that. Right. Um, so, move, move along. Uh, why, why voice acting? Um, you said you have a lot of fun doing this. Right. But... Um, yeah. I think I've been... In, uh, I've been incredibly fortunate because... I think I've been incredibly fortunate because... Well... I started this the same year that I started radio. Um, radio was something uh, back then, right? This is like, I'm pretty old. So this this is, and like oil is a time moves so fast that 10 years seems like a couple of decades. A lot has happened in 10 years. I mean, if you think about it, 10 years ago, Justin Bieber was only uh, just emerging in, and now he's like a big superstar. So yeah, a lot, a lot of things happened in 10 years. Um, why voice acting? Um, yeah, so I really, really wanted to do radio when I was younger. Um, uh, I've had this voice since I was 14. I sounded like my mother. I need the landline my phone out there. It's a oh, get up on it. Like my mom's friends used to talk to me, so I'd be like, I know more Torah. But um, then, yeah, then, um, then, then thankfully, puberty hit me like a train. And um, to be let's say, I used to traffic sounds from Kathmandu. Thank you. Um, to be let's say, I used to call in on radio programs. On the the uh, the host, did uh, they like radio presenters? They were very encouraging. So I think that um, that really boosted my confidence because I was a teenager and I had no idea what I was doing. I just used to call in on radio programs because I, you know, wanted to be heard. And this what she's saying encouragement sort of boy. Fast forward to 2011, I ended up applying to a radio station, got into it, and ended up working there for six years. Ani, the first uh, immediately after my 
um, interview in 2011. Uh, and when the station manager said, um, all right, we're going to hire you. Um, the next day, I went to an advertising agency and I said, if I'm good enough for a radio station, I'm good enough for you. So let's get the things, let's get rolling. Like, you know, so, you know, once I got validated from one person, uh, advertising agency, approach Kare, I remember my first voiceover was for like an insurance company. It's been 10 years since then. Same thing happened in China as well. So I wasn't very confident um, on whether people, uh, I would get the same reception as I did in Nepal. Um, China was in 2016. Ma. I, was, I, was, I went there on an exchange program. And unfortunately, the university, ma, like there would be ads saying like, we're looking for people to do voiceovers. And I'd be like, hey, I do voiceovers. Would you like to give me a shot? And then they were like, you sound very professional. And I was like, oh, okay. And yeah, and then, then that's that's what's been happening for the past couple of years. Okay, <laughs> that's what's been happening for the last couple of years. I love your energy, you know. Um, so uh, your energy, listen, Malapani, it's inspiring me uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. You're an artist, let's say, so he's into art or she's into art because they get an opportunity to express themselves. I know. What do you actually get out of this voice acting? Um, I feel like, um, like I think the radio and the voice acting say it's it's also become part of like my identity in the way that this is something that not a lot of people can do and this is something that I can do and uh, people appreciate it. And to say I I don't know like I'm not trying to be discouraging but or anything but just the fact that um, uh, that I'm able to do this and people seem to enjoy this, you know. It's 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 rewarding in that sense. Like I walk into a studio and then sometimes people are just like um, in awe at what comes naturally to me. So you know, to kura say it's it's just yeah, it's kind of it's kind of strange how to define this. Um, it's it's a it's a very niche field. Nepal uh, it's not even been recognized. I would say because sometimes some clients would be like bolneto, and I was like, so why don't you do it? Um, but you know, it, it really comes naturally to me, and uh, I enjoy it. And it it it's also a lot of talent because at the end of the day, you know, voice acting is acting, and you do have to like. If I had to do something for Coach Me, I would just switch to my broadcasting voice and be like, "Join Coach Me today," you know, something like that. So it this comes naturally to me. But mm, for a lot of people, they're just like, "How do you do that?" And I'm like, "It." I don't know, <laughs> you know, no. it's, it's just my thing, You're right? No, just your thing. Uh, but mm -hmm. the voice change got that uh, it definitely has an um, <laughs> impact on the listeners as well. I mean, right. Neville back to play ad or you know, say it on YouTube channel. I think so. Uh, very interesting in the and it just go affect about the pale bully go one. It happens like a busy thing. Um, I, I tended to listen to it differently. For some reason, mm -hmm. right? So, how did your family react? Bano na your voice acting when you got it's not bano. I recognize Bani Shaina. That you right. choosing it as a career. What was there? Yeah. I mean, it's something I enjoy. It's not something I depend on financially fully, right? Um, for that, I have my two master's degrees, which I'm hoping to use this year. Now that you know, our pandemic still I once, but at the same time, there are always cases rising. So I don't know what the job market's looking like. And um, this is not something I want to fully rely on. But at the same time, I do feel like um, a lot of people here in Nepal as well um, realize the need for someone like me who can, you know, talk about their brand in a more positive light, and. Uh, to be start as awareness saying oily ideas, especially because of COVID, because now that everything's moving digital and people want to be more visible and people are really looking for talent. Maybe just not my sector, uh, but I'm talking also about a lot of people who do digital marketing and also a lot of people who do like animations and motion graphics. So there's a lot of demand for these people now, now that everything's moving online, right? So yeah, in a way, COVID is is sort of beneficial and I'm I'm hoping that you know it leads to something nicer my family's always been very supportive i should consider myself very very fortunate um yeah so it's it's just the three of us me and my mom and dad and i here so uh, my family's been supportive of course they um know that i am not silly enough to completely rely on this 
And obviously they want me to like have a steady source of income too. And, and I do too, uh, to be honest, so uh, just, you know, entering a studio and just, you know, like, I still remember, um, back in 2016, like first time ever outside the country, right? Like uh, first time ever on a plane left the country and he just like randomly was Googling stuff being like, what are the advertising agencies here in Chengdu called one up? And then they were like, wow, you're really good. How about you go to a studio? Like took a subway for the first time in my life, went to a studio, did a few demos. And I still remember the excitement in the director's face. Like, you know, we've been looking for you. So, you know, that's something that that's really stuck with me. Like, um, yeah, I'd say, well, you know, sometimes people are just like, oh, okay. When, like, cause I, there's a lot of uh, a wide variety of projects. Yeah. I'd say it's mostly commercials or documentaries without saying they actually want me for like video games or movies and stuff. I mean, I really get to, um, show off and people, people really get excited because, you know, um, it's, 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 um, something that they've been looking for very desperately. I mean, then I just pop out of nowhere and be like, Hey, so let's do this. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's, that's always, that's always incredible. That's always incredible. So definitely. Um, mm -hmm. So marketing, branding, voice acting, you're constantly connected, sir. Um, I feel like um, that awareness is slowly coming here. Um, there, well, before I left the country, there used to be like a brand um, who I had an exclusive contract with on the two industry, I say two brands, I'm not going to own it um with with voice acting i think now it's it's even more important than ever and uh, well it's also scary because in the next five years the ai is going to be smart enough and our my job is going to go away <laughs> but um branding marketing go like it's i feel like if you're talking about a product then why not have someone um talk someone with a pleasant voice someone who can really um talk about your brand in a way that people listen so I feel like, yeah, slowly there's like an awareness of it. But at the same time, a lot of people do think a voice to I mean I can so throw voice support and all that stuff. But to branding marketing, I feel like um, you know, voice is something that people really connect with, right? I know like um I'm just saying sometimes some advertisements stick with you just because of the fact that it sounds pleasant, right? And that's very important now because people have very short attention spans. Like you have to get your message in like 15 to 30 seconds. You have to get a message across in 15 to 30 seconds and you want to make it as memorable as possible. And if you want to do that, um, you want to use all your resources, all the resources that you have at your disposal and get the best talent. And like, that's something I, I would insist on here as well. There's a lot of cost cutting that goes on in Nepal. I'm just not, not, not talking about my field, but even, even in other fields, right? The cost cutting ones are, if you're really a brand and if you really want to support artists who, who really like, who really love doing this and who thrive on this, then I think it's your responsibility to support them, not just for the sake of supporting them, but show that your product shines as well. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're a pleasant voice, let's say, you have no message convey, it will be more effective. So right. if you have one pleasant voice, is that one pleasant voice enough key? Contextually, you need to use different voices. I mean, why? No, I mean, obviously it depends on like, um, right. Like I said, voice acting is acting. Right? I mean, obviously I would, uh, change my voice according to the needs of the project. Like sometimes I need to be very solemn, especially like Earthquake Villa, there were a couple of projects. I cannot use my cheerful voice for that, right? I need to be very solemn. I need like, that's something that the project demands. So I need to switch um, to that mode. I mean, most of the times it's, it's sometimes people want me to do like movie trailer style commercials. <laughs> Those seem to be very popular. And uh, sometimes it's just, you know, just a mellow voice that like, you know, you want to listen to and, you know, reminds you of a friend. So mm -hmm. I feel like, um, yeah, this, this, is, this is legit acting. It, just okay. the fact that people can't see you does not mean it's not acting. And acting is an art form. 
And I, I'm going to insist that voice acting is an art form. A lot of people, um, so recently I uh, uploaded my portfolio video on Instagram and a lot of people are like, I want to do this too. And I'm like, that's great. But at the same time, this is serious business. And I'm not going to tell everyone that they can be a voice actor. That would be lying. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's okay. that. Okay. So but yeah, voice acting is an art form. I completely agree. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot be a voice actor, you know, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, okay, fine. So, when you switch to your voice, switch to your voice, are you just switching your voice? Are you switching mentally? Your are you just switching your voice? Are you switching mentally when you are preparing in other ways? Oh, like, um, it's it's basically what actors do. I know, like, once you go into a different scene, you, you have to go into that mode as well. Like, it's not just like, you know, you use a deeper voice and then things get better. It's not really that. So you have to be in that state of mind. And especially it's easier for us, uh, but for me as a voice actor, because like there are not a lot of prying eyes. So I think it in that regards, I feel like acting in front of a camera would be harder because there would be people. Mata, I just go to the studio, put my mic, put my headphones on, and then, and then I know what to do. And it, it gets easier because... I know that I'm not like being watched upon. So in that regards, it is easier than on camera acting. I, I, I've never tried on camera acting, so I cannot comment on that, but it, it sounds very intimidating. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, the ability to be in movies, commercials, voice acting, I mean, English, Nepali, Chinese, right? So right. Um, what, what, what did you enjoy the most? Um, Chinese, I just did it once. It was very, very challenging. Ani Nepali, it's mostly just commercials and documentaries. Um, because I was in China and like I got to do like a variety of jobs from like children stuff like uh, ed tech or educational technologies or um, audio books or video games or so video games. There's like a wide range of characters that you can be, and it's it's always fun to step into that to the fantasy world. Okay? They would say, I feel like so far I've been allowed that opportunity only in English. So like mm -hmm. maybe someday like the Nepali industry grows big as well. Like I really, there's a lot of talent here. So if they grow big enough and they need a wider audience and then there's demand for people. I hope there's demand for people like me because um, right? Uh, like, you know, the whole IT sector is like supported by work that comes from outside. So why not we make our own products and, and like send it out abroad as well? So, you know, I'm really confident about that as well. Having worked in China for like four years, um, you know, not, no, not five years. Um, I feel like, yeah, there are, I'm sure there are other people like me out there, maybe not many, but I'm pretty sure there are other people out there who can really take Nepal on the world stage. Okay. Okay, I don't know how much I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I mean, so, young girl, boy, if they're thinking about voice acting as their career, um, mm -hmm. what would your suggestions be? I don't know. Your career, I don't know. Take these into right. consideration. I mean, this is, this is not going to be a full time thing. This, this should not be your full time thing. I am going to insist on that. Um, you know, uh, for, like I said, I have my other things going on as well. This is something that I enjoy. This is something that I'm good at. And this is something that people seem to enjoy too when I do it. Um, like, um, I feel like if you think you have got it, and if a lot of people do tell you that you have a very pleasant sounding voice, um, you know, my first suggestion would be to go to the radio, but now that radio is dead, um, I don't know if that suggestion would work anymore. So maybe just try out with your... Try out with like maybe a short podcast or something. There are a few podcasts that are doing really well. Ani, something like that maybe. Uh, also, uh, try and work with as many creative people as possible. I I will always insist working with like a great director because you're, an actor is as only good as a director. So if you have the best direction, you can always go in the right way and you'll have a fine product on your hands. Okay, you'll have a fine product on your hand. I mean, you uh, talk about ten years ago, Johnny, one of them. What are some challenges you faced along the way? Your voice acting. I mean, uh, getting screwed over a lot. 
So sometimes <laughs> I think that's that's a challenge. Um, it's really off-putting oily pani when people are like, you know, don't consider this like important, or they'll just try to say like, oh, this is just speaking. So you know, anyone can do it. That that's always very off-putting, and I I really don't like the conversation just ends there. Like I'm not even gonna bother saying like you know this is why this is what because if you, if you don't understand the what I need, what I'm able to offer, then I'm not gonna go into that. On the autocorrect, yeah, getting ripped off really sucked because like when I was younger, um, you know, I didn't really understand the value of it. So people have made money off of me. That's kind of sad. <laughs> Okay, um, so that is kind of sad. But, uh, what did you learn from it? Any how, how? What's your strategy now? Um, know your worth. I feel like um, I, that goes for any creative person out there who's freelancing. Know your worth. Learn to say no. Okay. Sometimes you just have to say no, because um, you know uh, you have a craft. Uh, your craft has value. And if other people can't see that, don't bother. Okay. Um, okay, I've got uh, a few more questions, uh, Super Z. Um, probably, uh, we'll try and keep it under thirty minutes for sure. Um, you've just said, okay, know your worth, learn to say no. I mean, a lot of us, even culturally, I mean, we struggle to say no. You know, so if mm -hmm. someone comes to you and says, okay, more say, is this the field I'm going to not necessarily mm -hmm. voice acting. So I'm mm -hmm. struggling to say no. Uh, your suggestion mm -hmm. that young girl or a guy would be? I mean, if you're just starting out and you know you're looking for the experience, do it for a while. Um, but at the same time, have like good negotiation abilities. Ani, but after you have the uh, experience uh, to show other people your work, this is what she's saying. Like, I think you you can say no. I mean, like, if, if you're not relying, that's why I would say, like, you know, don't rely on on this full time, obviously. So it's, I I think I learned to say no only, like, a few years ago, like, four years ago. And it's a fantastic feeling. <laughs> like, let me tell you, it's a fantastic feeling when people be like, um, we're offering you this much money, um, take it or leave it. I am going to leave. Thank you. Have a good day, sir. It's a fantastic feeling. <laughs> I mean, um, it, it took me like a couple of years, I would say. It took me like a couple of years to say no. Um, like, you know, um, but, you know, it's been a few years that if if I'm not happy about the project or if it's if it's a company whose philosophy that I don't agree with, then I will just be like, yeah, I, I, I cannot do this. Um, for said reasons, don't sell out one to one I mean, obviously, it's a struggle and everything, but stick to your values, stick to your beliefs, and it's it's hard. It's hard because capitalism is cruel, and uh, sometimes you you do have to um, shove away your beliefs. But to the extent possible, to the extent that capitalism allows you, try and stick to your beliefs. <laughs> Okay, try and stick to your beliefs. So, values, beliefs, mm -hmm. like saying, if you kind of value them, uh, you'll it'll be easier mm -hmm. to say no. Right, right, right. Okay, so Tapai uh, saying, if you look back at uh, ten years of your career, what are your three proudest moments? Uh, my three proudest moments. Um, right, one would be one would be my my first gig. Um, 10 years ago, first gig, 19-year-old, uh, uh, did a commercial, saw the commercial on TV, um, pointed at people and said, hey, that is my voice that you hear on the commercial. That was still, I think, you know, the first gig that I did. Super proud of it. Um, the second proudest moment would be when I came home for the summer here, uh, summer break my Nepal on the Hedi. I got a call from Beijing and we're like, hey, this project needs some correction, so we want you to fly back. So I came here. Um, a week later, they sent me tickets to go back. I worked for four days and came back. And like my family was like, whoa, you just came back and you left for four days and came back for a job. That's amazing. That that was a super proud moment for me. And what would what would the other one be? Um, 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 
May maybe the time that I did, uh, like this wouldn't matter much here, but also the time that I did my my only Chinese voiceover, which was for my university. So, um, you know, Chinese is considered difficult as it is. And for, for me to have done a voiceover, it, it's on YouTube. And I mean, like a lot of people here wouldn't really know what to think of it, but a lot of my Chinese friends, they'll be like, damn, this guy's good. So, <laughs> so I would say that, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's, it's a language. So what makes you a good learner? Um, I feel like... I would say I've been incredibly fortunate. Um, you know, uh, I watched a lot of TV, which is where I get this accent from. So, you know, a lot of people think I studied in an international school, especially in China. People will be like, you must come from a lot of money because you could afford an international school. And I'd be like, nah, I just, I just watched a lot of HBO and Cartoon Network growing up. So I feel like, dude, I've been blessed. It's, it's very easy for me to imitate things, even as a kid. So um, it's just that I didn't just rely on it, obviously. Um, I feel like it's always important that you try and read more about the world as well. That's always going to make you an interesting person. I mean, if, if I sit down with someone here and have a conversation, um, I think they leave thinking like, all right, that was, a, that was an interesting conversation I've had. That, you know, I wished I had more conversations like that. I really enjoy conversations like that myself as well when like um you know i get new perspectives and new ideas and stuff yeah okay awesome awesome um probably say um imitating company could have gone to and a lot of us mm -hmm. think that imitate imitation has got uh, a negative connotation but even the man was under uh it can be a good learning um, tool, I know. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. they say me, we're always imitating anyway. Um, the imitation one, like you know, you don't try to copy someone else, like you know, their mannerisms or anything. But, um, I feel like you know, sometimes just if you see something interesting and like it's it's good, always good to like you know, put that whatever you find interesting. Maybe it's like a mannerism. Maybe it's the way someone says some certain things. Maybe it's an idea that someone's floated around. It's good to just hold on to it and like put it in the back of your head and like, you know, try and mold it in your own way. I wouldn't say like, you know, be like me. No, do not be like me. Like, you know, um, but obviously um, I, if, if you find something that I say interesting, then, you know, maybe try to read up more on it uh, and form your own ideas. Okay, uh, form your own ideas. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, Tapai Kosei Banana. If you had 50% more time in your day, what would you spend those time doing? <laughs> if I had 50% time, I am pathologically lazy. So I do not know how exactly to answer that question. Monse, um, if I had more time, if I had. I wish I could have utilized my existing time, but if I had more time, wow, that would be a lot of time. That would be 36 hours. Even if I slept like eight hours of it. Anyways, no, I'm not, I'm not going to go into the math of it. Um, if I, I don't think I've ever wished for more time, to be honest. Um, like, I'm going on a different tangent here, but I, I will give you my reasons for why I'm going on a different tangent. But so when I was 25, like on my 25th birthday, I freaked out. I absolutely freaked out. Like I was like, what is happening? I, I'm not ready to be 25. No, I, I remember this, right? I, I felt like I really was running out of time. And like, I, I thought that, you know, there were certain things I should have accomplished by now. When I was 15, I thought I would be married by 25, married, success, successful and married by 25, right? When I was 15, but then I was 25 and it didn't feel much different from when I was 15. Um, but then 26 happened, it wasn't so bad. 27 was amazing. 28, I didn't even care. 29, you know, like, yeah. So I, I think one of the things that young people tend to do, like which I tended to do, was set myself like a time limit. Like my self-worth depends on the work that I do. 
Uh, so it's very important that I'm constantly working. I feel like that is that is a dangerous philosophy because it's just going to bur cause burnout and stress. So I don't think I wish for more time. I feel like things are happening slowly. I'm trying to keep positive. This has been a terrible year for everyone. But like I'm trying to keep positive. Things I let things take their own pace. I feel like we're very fortunate. Like Nepali, we are very fortunate because we're a very laid back culture. It's, it's, it's no one's really stressed out, stressed out. Well, again, when I say this, I, I come from a place of privilege. I know, obviously, especially um, once your like finances are, are not as great, that is the root of a lot of problems. So when I say when we're a laid back country, it's very chill. That's me coming from a place of privilege. That's me knowing that I don't have to worry about putting food on the plate. Um, but I say this because, I mean, culturally, I do feel like um, we're not very worried. And we, we need to keep that intact, you know. And it's, it's not a race we're running. Um, there isn't a time limit. There, isn't things, there aren't things that you need to be, uh, you need to have done by a certain age. So take it easy. I feel like things will happen when they need to happen. And yeah, um, you know, just do things that make you happy for your for your own good. Like, okay, I'm going on a different tangent, but I'm going to keep it very short. Um, monetize your hobbies, Bansa. No, do not ever monetize your hobbies. Your hobbies are for yourself. You, do not, you, you don't do things you like to get validation from other people. You don't do things you like to earn money. You do things you like because you like them. So, I am a big believer in that. So, yeah. Okay. Full stop. Um, uh, make them Ramru advice when you do not monetize your habits. Hobbies, hobbies. hobbies. Right, Sorry. right. No. Absolutely. Um, that makes a lot of sense. You know, mm -hmm. it becomes complicated. I you know, know more than you enjoy it think of it uh, financially got last three questions um okay. what is one thing um that in your life that you're ignoring at the moment uh, that you'd like to do but you've been ignoring for for a while um getting a full-time job um do you want to say i i've i think i've not been an initiative person much because things have fallen into place almost um uh, not all the time but most of the times just things people just find their way to me uh, that's made me quite lazy. I need, I need to work on that. I need to be more proactive. You pandemic excuse me, boy. You you saw coronavirus, Cyrus. This was you can't go allow it, boy. But now I feel like um, it's time to be more proactive. Like leverage my strengths. Okay, nice. It's time to be proactive. Um, so we'll see. You're you're with your team of friends, and in a circle, mm -hmm. you're um, you're very close friends, one. You're mm -hmm. in a room, and you walk out of that room. Mm -hmm. What do what do your friends miss about you when you when you walk out? I mean, I feel like uh, you know, um, every time I'm with friends, I'm always not the same person. Like sometimes I bring a different energy into the room. Sometimes I bring a lot of skepticism and cynicism. Uh, a few of my friends like know me as the cynic, as the skeptic person. A few of my friends really enjoy my honesty. So. I feel like it just depends on the kind of kind of aura that I bring into the room. Sometimes I'm I'm very very cynical, and and the, I feel like that's justified as well because there are things that are beyond our control. I right? know, like I feel like um, the uh, the socioeconomic privileges that you have really define um, your potential. So sometimes, mm -hmm. so I don't believe in this whole like work hard and you will be successful philosophy. I feel like, yes, you need to work hard, um, but at the same time, you need to question um, problematic structures. So like, um, especially in Nepal, because I studied politics as well, um, there are um, things that are beyond our control, not just, I need to do recognition, boy. I feel like um, that's, um, you don't get discouraged easily, you know, like, I'm not saying to personally bond that money. Like I'm not saying like know your personal limitations and stuff. But what I'm saying is recognize that there are things that are beyond your control, and recognize that it's 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 hard for everyone. I mean, just keep telling yourself that you're not special. 
like and I say this as is it might sound discouraging that uh, once you once you go to the mindset like you have a certain skill set and like you can do certain things but that doesn't make you incredibly special do you boy when it's saying I feel like once you drop that individualistic idea it makes you a better team player and you get things done wow okay okay that that makes a lot of sense um in a very kibani a contradictory way okay about you know right. the mindset so we all tend to think that we are all special in some ways so to you don't like it you become part of the team it's easy to work as a team player and you all get the burden but not so right so you don't have to think of yourself as so special and uh, try and prove to the world that you're special um and you've talked about skill sets and and so on certain skill sets and so on so what what are some skill sets that you have um that you think will take you to your ultimate outcome mm, i feel like um i'm slowly beginning to realize that um when i make a point people do listen to me and i should use that to my advantage um do you could as i i don't know it's maybe just the way i convey my ideas maybe um how i articulate them so your articulation one and say you're not probably going to say hoda na you got to read a lot cuz sometimes you you don't know what to express because you lack the vocabulary for it um i feel like i need to use that to my advantage um like i think when i walk into a room um people tend to think um that i'm highly educated or like i come from like a very rich family or stuff to some extent to it's it's not true i've had a very humble beginning i would say i i still very a humble lifestyle I lead a very very frugal lifestyle you might catch me on a, like a nepali at that sometimes so you know um yeah um tu kuraze i feel like uh, the fact that my strengths i would say would be um i can be very convincing but i need to work on that um i obviously need to choose what i want to be convincing on so that's a decision i still need to make um i feel like it's it's kind of easy for me to win people over so that's something i also need to use to my advantage and uh, i am honest but poyla uh, used to be brutally honest but now i like mellow it down a bit so cuz i still want people to like me <laughs> <laughs> no, nicely put nicely put uh, there is an a brutally honest manja listen i think they learn it uh, one on a eventually in life alikati go down che garni parcha um so सुप्रल जी मैं तीन टाइम क्वेश्चन बनाए थे आम भन न तब सुंदा सुंदा आम वेरी टेम्पेड टू आस्क यू वन लास्ट क्वेश्चन प्लीज हाउ डू यू डील विथ फेलियर्स इन लाइफ राइट वाओ दैट्स अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट क्वेश्चन राइट एंड दिस इज कमिंग फ्रॉम समवन हुज हुज बिन थ्रू लॉट ऑफ फेलियर्स राइट अब ते हो समटाइम्स देर विल बी मिस हैप्स समटाइम्स यू नो थिंग्स वोट वर्क आउट फॉर लॉट ऑफ रीजन्स um sometimes um they you know, it's it's the circumstances um you know sometimes it's the people failures are going on say um it's part and parcel of life um my my first response to like a massive failure would be just to cry it out cuz like you know gender roles are meaningless if you are sad cry it out it's okay boys it doesn't make you less of a man and it also helps it always helps to to talk to someone um who's just supportive and and uh, who listens i feel like um to to company i've been lucky i've been very fortunate that i have people who who really love and care for me and who are always there to listen to me when i am not feeling so great so you know hold on to those people be good to those people um they can be your family they can also be people outside your family be good to those people hold on to them because you know this life is too cruel to go at it alone <laughs> okay beautiful beautiful um thank you so much people ji i really like uh, your uh, typical dealing with failure strategy pani so you need to have uh, good friends with you as well family members just so saying you can talk about on uh, your failures and your emotional a uh, bag is when you can you know uh, unload with them and or possibly don't go through it right now 
obviously we think that um, it's we shouldn't do it but it's okay it's definitely a strength to have and if you're capable of crying um better so out than I, in so better out than in uh true, better true. out than in <laughs> yeah please i'm sorry i interrupted you i know it kicks up um i i like interruptions um, <laughs> um we, okay we should hang out we should hang out like in real life and not just over like you know a computer oh true true True. Um, so, um, kune pani bila. We we can uh, fix a time and then we should uh, meet over uh, some coffee first. Coffee is always a good start. <laughs> um, so, thank you so much, Supralji. I learned quite a bit from you. I I loved your energy. Ani tespeci how you discussed topic of strategies aru ani topic of strengths aru ani topic of kate kate fears ani ani your suggestion about you know people who are thinking of or considering. Uh, their career in 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 this same profession manera so i really enjoyed uh topic energy nahi so talking to you brought up my it's been a good week it, it's been a good week like like you know if, if this was last week this would be a very different conversation <laughs> i'm very lucky <laughs> uh so uh, if there's anything you'd like to add um please add gornu ala any viewers only you can just close the session for us any viewers or let's say please do not forget to subscribe taki we're motivated to bring in more inspiring people like um supral ji who we can learn you know um and obviously uh, you you've chosen a field where uh, there's not a lot of uh, i don't know mentality adventure gore acha nan bhanu na the field ma I mean, um, I've seen uh, some of your work. I mean, that looks amazing. I like I made a version just to tag it into one of those videos. But all you're listening, I'm going to make a guide for even practice going to pull us. Um, Tara Pani. So, ah, uh, subscribe so that we can bring in more people like uh, Supralji. Ah, uh, that's it. I mean, Mirtha, have a good night. And Supralji, what would you like to add? Any any suggestions? Parting suggestions. Right. Um, maybe one thing that I would like to talk about is, I mean, I, I recently just had a word for it because, like, I just ran across an article on the internet. It's called like survivorship bias. Okay? Um, it's when like you look at someone and they're because they're successful, you think anyone can do it. Like I see so many motivational seminars, like when Sunday, quite like I rack on the Facebook feed or man, and people will be like. Bill Gates, like you know, Mark Zuckerberg. If they their college dropped out, dropouts, and like they were so successful, the two by the survivorship bias by and the titi or the exana zonmina ko lagi that there have been like thousands and like ten thousands, maybe millions of people who failed. So the survivorship bias they recognize, God knows, I think it's it's incredibly important. You're only, I mean, as as cheesy as it may sound, your only competition is yourself. Um, or kala yerne banda hai, but ni like look at how you were yesterday. and then that is your benchmark you know i feel like you got to be better than what you were yesterday and like i don't mean to say this in like um costo hisable banne i mean just grow as a person um not financial success matters success i know i mean this year i think everyone's realized that what's most important is mental health right I mean, maybe a lot of people say, "Oh, man, the COVID leaders, he got this, he got," and all that. And like, again, they this is coming from a place of privilege. I'm like, "Whoa, whoa!" Like, you know, we don't have to worry about putting food on the plate. We don't have to worry about paying rent and stuff. So, they water to basic needs are that I'm recovered by that. So, fortunately, for all the people um, who have it really hard, that is a structural problem that that only political leadership can solve, right? To any Yeah, that's a different conversation we'll have on a different day. But yeah, um, for those of us privileged enough to not have to worry about food, rent, and the basic necessities in life, oru kura oru banana. The second day, right? So banana, how boy? So mental health is mo- what's most important. Um, do not set unrealistic benchmarks for yourself. Um, it's it's good to be ambitious, but don't don't set uh, like unrealistic ambitions. I I would say because that's just gonna lead to like a downward spiral of depression. So. Um, Afulay um, new. It's very important to know who you are, what drives you. It's very important to know what makes you happy. It's very important to know um, who are the people who care for you, and uh, yeah, take it easy. I would say I would say that yeah. 
the the uh used to unto one that it more is it so as a you boy one is it I think that's a healthier philosophy eh more saying only laid back what man say is it I feel like that's that's what I do money when eh at one point like you need money obviously you need money financial everything comes down to like you know um financial well-being financial health is important there are, after a certain time like money has diminishing returns so like do it paisa chaincha chaincha paisa jati bhayo pani pugdaina bhane after a certain time you just know that like you know money has diminishing returns like to your point some puna like saying do your best i really hope um your the circumstances work in your favor to your point some puisa like saying don't stress it out like the gym kings le bana that's any like the the pathological need for having money that is a disease banera i mean i don't know the exact quote that a money one because it's a means to 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 do things that you want to do things for the people that you love and that's it like like you know the pathological need for money is is dangerous wow i i spoke a lot at the end <laughs> yeah but that was very worthy um topic of parting suggestions many um very very टचिंग वेरी वर्दी अफ वर्दी अफ द टाइम संगसंगे आई वु जिस एड कि बी काइंड टू योर सेल्फ है जिस जिस यू हेव यू सेट योर सेल्फ रियली हाई एक्सपेक्टेशन एंड यू फेल बी काइंड टू योर सेल्फ ब्यूटिफुल ब्यूटिफुल सजेशन दर्ज नॉट अ पॉइंट दैट आई वुड नॉट अग्री विथ वॉट यू सेट Ani so that's it friends uh thank you for watching ani have an awesome night and we'll see you soon whenever we see you thank you super right. thank Namaste. you so much for having me i apologize for my horrible camera but i think the audio is better so yeah that, i think that hopefully that makes up for my bad camera <laughs> awesome yeah nice good night all right good night <laughs>